Okay. So, these are our live streams. This is episode three. We are doing these every Saturday night when the girls go to bed. They are knocked out, finally. And we're going to be talking... The format of this is is we're going to talk about life, love, and Tesla. So we're going to hit topics on all three things. And then we're going to do a Q&A and just interact with you guys. So, yeah, I wanted to talk about the new Corvette that came out uh, a couple days ago. I mean, it looks pretty cool. I, I The two cars that I was fascinated with when I first started driving or was about to drive as a kid was the, the Corvette, the Stingray, mm -hmm. like the older one. That's and a pretty classic car. The Dodge Charger. I don't know. I just really like the Dodge Charger. I was obsessed with it. And when I finally, like got into money from college like we graduated college mm -hmm. I started making some money I bought a charger yeah and I loved it you I loved that <laughs> I loved the, the looks of it I, but like driving it I mean the transmission gave us a ton of problems and like a lot of our Chrysler Dodge vehicles yeah. did with the transmission and that was a constant theme because your car is in the same family or mm -hmm. Chrysler um, but yeah I'm gonna talk more about like that's changed drastically after having a Tesla, owning one, driving one. What was your car as growing okay. up what you wanted? So I love Jeeps, always wanted a Jeep. And I finally like, I finally, after I got out of high school, um, I drove like a old truck for like majority of my high school life. Um, my parents helped me out by getting me a uh, 04 Jeep Wrangler, which was like one of the last years before they came out with the uh, cool. TJ. Mm -hmm. The four door. Yeah. Yeah, because yours was just the two door. Yeah, with the yeah round headlights, and it was it was pretty much it made my life. I had just gotten out of like a serious relationship, and I think my parents felt really bad for me. She just met me. Like she yeah. got it like two weeks before we met. Yeah. Like, recently, like right before we met. Yeah, we found it on Craigslist, and luckily for us, it was like in good shape and was a great vehicle. And then like I had it for like a really long time, and then um we had the girls, and it doesn't work for car seats, a two door Jeep um it's very difficult so we had to trade it and that like i cried yeah yeah so. but how do you feel now that you've driven like something else that has a powertrain like electric compared to like the jeep and the the chrysler cars we've had okay so like after so we traded my wrangler in for a what year was it like a 15, 15. um jeep renegade trailhawk white it was beautiful i was like okay i can do doors. this yeah i was like this is okay as i was crying in the parking lot um, so we got that car and it had transmission issues. It, they replaced the transmission twice. Mm -hmm. Um, like within 5,000 miles of having it. Yeah. So I hadn't even had it four months maybe, and it was brand new and they were replacing the transmission. Um, every time it would shift from first to second, it would slam you back in the seat. Mm -hmm. Um, and they said, that's just how it is. Yeah. And I know um, that car in particular, but Chrysler, like our, my Dodge Charger, like you would go, you go on a left turn and you would go to, you know get some acceleration to, to make sure you don't get t-boned and it would just stall out it wouldn't go and it, it like freaked me out for us driving or her driving like because you couldn't if you, yeah. if you if you tried you know pushing it and turning left and someone was coming you it would sometimes just stall out and not give you any power um and the one thing like with the tesla that i tell people is like one of the best things about it is the lack of tra transmission there's no gears there's no shifting and they're like so who cares big deal like every car in our adult life the transmission has been like just it sucked it, it it's been like a safety issue the car doesn't do exactly what you want it to when you push the pedal mm -hmm. down and having the tesla or just having an electric car it's it the, the pedal does exactly the car does exactly what you tell it to you want to go you're gonna go you want to slow down you're gonna slow down there's no lag there's no nothing so i feel absolutely secure in this car mm -hmm. And I, I just, I didn't really feel that way with, with any of the Chrysler vehicles that we, and then we've been going with Chrysler since we've been Yeah, adults. and um, even my Durango now will have a hiccup every now and then. Mm -hmm. It's a little sketchy. Um, before we got the Tesla, um, we test drove a new um, Jeep Wrangler JL, which came out. Um, we test drove a white, no, it was the Silver Sahara edition. It was really nice. It was beautiful. And I'm pretty sure if Anthony didn't get this car, I was going to get that car. <laughs> Um, it was just gorgeous. I loved it. gave me all the feels of when I had that other Jeep, you know. Yeah. Um, but, you know, that's uh, it, after having the Tesla, it makes me kind of reconsider my priorities and what I want in a vehicle. Yeah, like. And what's practical. I see the new cars, like that new Corvette that came out, and it's just the. I can't get as excited because it's like, I feel like it's still like a flip phone or like a pack of cigarettes. <laughs> like, I look at it and it's just, they put a new year on it, the 2020 pack of cigarettes it's just old it's not the way if they made an electric version maybe because mm -hmm. like just this powertrain in general 
any new car that doesn't have an electric motor with instant torque just seems silly. Mm -hmm. And I mean, maybe the styling, but once you drive it, which is the whole point, not just to look at it, it's it's not the same experience as driving an electric car. I don't know if you guys feel the same way or if you guys have an electric car or if you're thinking about it, what kind of gas cars you drive now, but yeah, it, it's night and day, just the driving experience. Even in our Kia Soul EV, that thing was a blast to drive. Mm -hmm. It was a dinky little EV, but I mean, I enjoy just the driving experience of that more than my charger because it still had the instant torque and it was just reliable. It did exactly what I wanted it to, to do and yeah. I don't know, I'm rambling. <laughs> I think it was really cool. Today we were at a birthday party we took the girls to and we actually stole the parents and yeah. let them drive our Tesla and they enjoyed it. Yeah, they had they such had a good time. time. Um, I think, I don't know, that makes me so happy that we can let other people experience that because on the outside they're like, oh, that's a really interesting, cool car. And I'm like, well, wait till you get on the inside. And or you just know, drive it. Yeah. yeah and they know, first thing people notice is the white seats right away. They're like, why do you have those with kids? And I'm like, mm -hmm. they're actually not that bad. Um, my black seats are actually look nastier <laughs> than these the ones day, yeah. do. Yeah. Um, but it's always super fun to like, you know, launch the car with new people in it and they don't know. Well, and when they actually sit in the driver's seat and drive it, like mm -hmm. it, it's one thing to sit in it, but to drive it, that's the whole thing is the driving experience. And it, it was a blast just watching them drive it yeah just, just the interest and the pure joy of it being so radically different than and then you just hit a few of the points of like software updates no maintenance the you know no oil changes no brake changes you know you regenerative braking mm -hmm. all that and then the driving experience instant torque just puts smiles on their faces and they're just like why am i driving anything else or why aren't other companies making cars like this yeah and then always kind of like their next question is how much did it cost how much does it cost to charge you know mm -hmm. to operate and i think people are relatively surprised at how simple and cheap it is to power these things like relative to gas prices and just <laughs> being able to 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 like just charge at home have a full charge every morning not have to worry about it and then when you're actually traveling at least with tesla there's a supercharger network so you never have to worry about you know what where are you going to charge that's everybody i talk to you at work like oh you're never going to find a place to charge you'll never see me drive one of those and the the misconceptions are crazy so I don't know. I hope that we can help in some way to just give some insight. And we have the, the cheap version. This is yeah. the standard range plus. So as far as speed and torque and all that, this is the lowest model. And yet it still brings smiles to our faces. Oh, yeah. And it's like so much fun to just show off and enjoy. Yeah, we're like the most low pressure salespeople you've ever met. <laughs> and we aren't even selling. So, <laughs> but it's just fun to share the experience with people in our lives. Because I think people are genuinely curious. Yeah, they're curious. It's a, it is different. It's like a paradigm shift that has to happen. But it's, as soon as it happens, like, or like people just experience it, I think it just, there's a switch that's flipped. Mm -hmm. Even like my parents, they're in their sixties now. Even my parents were like, wow, that's like an amazing car. And it's actually pretty affordable, you know, and they're, they wish that that would have been something that, you know, they're retired now and in a different stage of their lives, mm -hmm. but something that they could have had, you know, younger, I think they would have looked more into it, but yeah, it's, it's super neat. And I'm, I'm always like so happy to, um, Share people. share people, you know, and just because yeah, like Tesla doesn't do the dealership thing. Like they have some shops around at the mall and stuff mm -hmm. that you can. You have to schedule test drives, so that is a bit of an inconvenience. And like we never drove a Model Three before we bought this thing, but like just owning our previous electric car, we knew how it was going to drive, and mm -hmm. just knowing the specs, we didn't have to test drive it. But a lot of people that that's like no way, I'm not driving or I'm not buying a car that I cannot test drive, and hopefully we can help get people more confident in just driving one of these. You do get a week. So if you do think about buying one of these, you get one week and you can return it for a full refund, no questions asked. Um, so they do give you that option. It is kind of a pain because you still have to manage getting your finances and stuff in mm. order if you're going to do financing and stuff. But I don't know, there's a very, very small percentage chance that you're going to want to give this thing back. I'd be super surprised unless you had some major flaw in the vehicle received, mm. which is it's not very common. No, not um, anymore. Yeah. So, and like, as far as like receiving the car, kind of not driving it and everything, as soon as we drove the car back from Littleton, which we received, uh, we kicked my Durango out of the garage. <laughs> <laughs> and now, um, now yeah. the Tesla's in the garage and my Durango sits out there like a shame child. So <laughs> it's like, it, it's number, like, it, it's next. Yeah. It so it it's time it. is coming, I think, but you know, it's been a solid vehicle for us, but yeah, immediately we knew right away. We we're like, nope, that, that Durango's got to sit out in the driveway. 